hesitant to press the start button this time. Okay, are we here? Are we there? Are we everywhere? Are we online? Are we streaming? Are we alive? I think we're here. Welcome, comrades, to another episode of Under Construction. Forgot what the name of the series was for a second. Can never get the hang of Thursdays. You all know how it is. Welcome to the party. Switch to the route layer. Let's not make that mistake right now. Uh, we have three really annoying skew intersections, or four if you count that one, three and a half, uh, four and a half, whatever. We've got some intersections to do. I'm not excited about it. Um, you all shouldn't be excited about it either. It's uh, not going to be fun. And before we do that, obviously, we need to get the uh, the stream ready to go, stream warmed up, get, uh, get everybody in here, of course. That means we need to play a little bit of Not Tetris. Hopefully we're going to try to beat our score. I have had a really rough time beating scores today because about an hour and a half ago I bought Buckshot Roulette. And, uh, well, first of all, all the top scores in Buckshot on the leaderboard are bugged. But, you know, I couldn't, you know, I, I wasn't surviving. I was, uh, I think I only shot myself in the face once and that might be my problem. Because I'm not playing aggressively enough. I'm not taking the risks I need to take in order to uh, to win Buckshot Roulette. Okay. Um, I am not sure what my best play is right here. Oh, shoot. Definitely not that. Uh, well. Well, that's... That went poorly. Okay. Put this over here. Put this over here. Put this over down here. Oop. We, we can recover from this. We're going to be fine. We're going to be completely fine. Okay. Put this sucker over here. Nope. Honestly, that went pretty well. But yeah. Buckshot Roulette. It's a lot of fun. Very good. Very good game. Honestly, I... It's one of the few things that I can genuinely, like, thank Markiplier for turning me on to. Which, in turn, I have to thank Gloria, because I don't watch Markiplier. They do. Uh, <laughs> but either way, it was it was some... Oh, shoot. Either way, saw that video, went and looked up another video, because I was just curious about it. Ended up watching a YouTuber called Delightful Kiss Boy um, play. Uh, first of all... The man's got a voice as smooth as butter. Um, definitely can't complain about that. And he knows a lot about the game. And he even put up like a like a dissertation on uh, like why you should never shoot yourself in Buckshot Roulette. And also, I would assume, in real life. But, you know, there is a slide in that whole set that is uh, when to consider shooting yourself. Speaking of slides, um, before... Next Wednesday, so in less than a week, uh, I'm having to create a slideshow for my Turner's Falls presentation. Now, the Turner's Falls presentation is going to use exactly the same script that I used uh, in that in that three quarters of an idiot episode, and that means the unabridged uh, three quarters of an idiot show, fa effectively, the unabridged script is going to be coming out in, you know, probably about a week. Uh, I would say, I don't know exactly when. If I get the chance to work on it over the weekend, maybe it'll come out on Monday? No, like, maybe, well, maybe it'll come out on Tuesday. Uh, I don't really have a plan as for timing of that. I suppose I could probably record it in advance. Oh, shoot. Wrong button. Um... I could record it in advance and post it. I was tempted to stream it. I was planning to stream it. I don't really have a way to... You know, I, I can't... I guess I can always stream PowerPoint, right? Like, there's nothing actively preventing me from streaming PowerPoint. I just need to set that up. Uh, OBS will... You know, OBS will stream whatever you want. It'll just stream a window. Um, oh, shoot. I should have let that get all the way to the bottom. Um... Oh, hey, Mopac. I'm glad to hear that you got off work at a reasonable hour and don't feel like death, especially the second one. Nobody... I don't like it when 
when my folks feel like death, when my comrades feel like death. Uh, oh no, oh no, that's not gonna, oh, it didn't fit just quite, okay, okay, this is going poorly. Things are going poorly, we're getting, we're getting in a tough spot. Oh, well, we're about to lose two lines, which is good. Um, that can go there. This can go here. Um, yeah, this is not going well. This isn't what I would call going well. Uh, <laughs> okay. I hope everyone that watches the VOD stuck around to, to hear that little piece of rant right before Mopac got here. Not really rant. Announcement. Channel announcement. New segment of Under Construction. No, we do this every time. Um, I do this instead of a the stream will start soon window because I prefer the engagement. And I prefer trying to beat my high score. Which, you know. Oh, shoot. No, 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 no. In there. Uh, which I am bad at. Uh, I'm not good at this game. Um... One, once upon a time, I had a high score of, like, 8,000, and I don't think I will ever have it again. Um, oh, for a PowerPoint stream. Now, well, so, so yeah. Want to stream PowerPoint. Want to do, like I was saying, I've got to make the... Damn it. <laughs> Alright, well, this is over. Uh, I've got to make the Turner's Falls presentation. Uh, I know a long time ago, and I believe on the... Um, on the actual episode of Three Quarters of One Idiot, uh, of Citation Needed, talked about the fact that I would be doing an unabridged reading of my very long script. And that time is going to come uh, relatively soon. So, like, hopefully within a week or so. If, you know, if I'm, I'm talking optimistically with whatever time I might have, but I need to make the PowerPoint within a week, so it's going to be a good opportunity for me to do that, for me to, uh, for me to record that. Okay, hold on, I have, I have maybe messed up slightly. Let's delete that, let's turn this around to here. Um... And let's jump into Surveyor 2.0 to scoop this over a little bit. Now, I'm not sure what the best way to do the rest of this skew intersection is. But at least, at least this has a one sidewalk thing. So that's, that's good. That'll help. Um, add spline point. Insert spline point here. And this is, okay insert spline point here. Um, let's dra grab another one. But yeah, so I'm going to do the very classic, you know, sort of next slide, please, right, uh, as I go through my Turner's Falls presentation for the YouTube people. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to accomplish doing it for the Grange. We have a projector, uh, although I'm not completely sure that we're even going to be in the same room as the projector when we do our thing, when we do our meeting. So we'll figure that one out. I need to talk to the Grange Master about that. But, and in any case, oh, you know what? This needs to be the lineless one. Uh, I need it to be this one, not this one. Okay, hold on. Um, replace spline with selected asset? Yes. Okay, perfect. And then you... Um, no, this one, this one. Replace spline with selected asset. Oh, no, it's facing the other way, okay. Uh, placement tool, nope, wrong way. That way, okay. Uh, I think I need to jump back into Surveyor 1.0, Surveyor Classic, and get all of this flattened out, because right now it's all wobbly. Um, so, let's jump in here. Grab this height. Okay. Not ideal, but it's all there. Uh, we're also going to need to get the corners. Maybe. We might have to get the corners. I, I have an idea. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. Surveyor 2.0, please. 
oh, I need another spline point. Uh, insert spline point here. And it's going to look like that. And then this middle section has to be... Uh, it's got to be this piece. Okay. Replace with selected asset. Cool. There we go. Um, oh, sweet. Okay. So, anyway, I have heard that the other video that went with the Turner's Falls video is coming soon. Alright, uh, insert spline point here. This is going to have to be the middle section, which is this one, because for some reason I think I'm... I don't know, I'm not missing anything. Uh, oh shoot, wrong button. Give me that, and then this, and then replace with selected asset. No! Replace with selected asset. This is what happens when you rush. No, but I will be doing it, you know, like within the next week. Yes. Do you need something? Okay, well, don't hesitate to, like, figure food out without me and then just let me know. My, my wallet's in the other room. I guess. I don't know. Unless you and TJ want to figure something out. I don't know. Talk to TJ about it. I have no preference. I, I just want food. Um, okay. So I have an idea to make this look a little better. Which is, if I pull this back to here, and pull this back to here, and I grab this, and I might also need an invisible road to help with the straightening. Um, if I do that... And then, invisible road. And I don't want an invisible road that's too invisible, because if I can't see it, it doesn't really help. Um, that's too invisible, honestly. These are all invi- like, okay. Okay, I'll take- that's platform? No. Invisible road, no traffic. That that I'm fine with. Uh, replace blind with selected asset. Why is it gone? What happened? Is it buried? No. It's just super invisible. Okay. How about this instead? Um, I can still click on it, so that helps. Okay, the yellow one. That's fine. Um, straighten spline. Uh, if I bring this... Okay, so you, you may notice the other problem, which is that the, the ground is once again subsiding. Uh, also, this area is not properly, like, it's not level, so. What did you say, baby? I was in music. Oh, okay. Soldier Boy. No, not Soldier Boy. I thought you said Soldier Boy. No, I'm listening to Russ. Who? Russ, he's a rapper. Oh, okay. So I was gonna say I didn't I didn't know Rust made music. No, uh, I wouldn't listen to it if he did. <laughs> okay. Oh shoot. I missed one spline point. So this Ah <laughs> your Your hair tickled the back of my neck. Ah no, my hair is like my hair looks great right now. I mean I don't disagree, it just tickles. Okay. No No, I I tucked it behind my ear. Oh, okay. Hi. Mm. I'm chilly. It's cold in here. Uh, no, nah, I'll be okay. Rob? I'll be okay. Let's see. I need this again. I wish grabbing the grid was harder. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, why are you... Why? I don't know. Sorry. D decide what you want with... D you He's and gonna... TJ decide. Okay. He's gonna what? He's going to come in in a minute. Okay, well, you know, don't, like, foist a bunch of menus at me. I can't do anything with those. 
Are you though? I am. Why is my oh the invisible roads are too invisible. This is driving me crazy. I know it's what it says on the tin, but okay. No, that's not helpful either. So this does look slightly better. I'm I'm not really complaining about the way the curbs are aligned. I'm not trying to make curbs that are realistically aligned because it would be a tremendous pain in the neck. But at least Yeah. At least this is a little bit less incredibly annoying. Uh, and I think I'm going to raise the cross street by 0.01, because that'll help. Um, okay. Okay, and let's grab this vertex height. Let's try 0.88. So we'll go up by just a little bit on the middle section. Yes. Okay. It's, it's in my pants, I think. Unless it's here. No, it's in my pants. And these corners are easier to do with the little pieces of uh, sidewalk. So let's go grab a little piece of sidewalk. Oh, that's an easy one. We should have done that one. We're going to do that one. We have so many roads to do. So many roads to do. That's annoying one. Or that's an annoying one. It's a annoying one. I'm making up words on stream. Losing my mind. I don't expect anyone to ever look closely at these intersections. Not now, not, you know, not in a hundred years. It's just, you know, if people are looking at this and thinking like, wow, that's a lot of detail. I, I'm i doing what I think is absolutely necessary to make it not look bad. Uh, <laughs> now, I realize... Well, in some ways my standards are fairly high, in other ways I think they are fairly low, because some people will spend a lot more time and effort on something like this, on this kind of, of detailing. And I respect that immensely, you know. These kind of things, they take a lot of effort. And I, if I were to put in enough effort to make every area look really, really good. Oh, I don't think this route would ever be anywhere close to done, you know? We would be here for a really, really, really long time. Um, oh, can I make this even narrower? Oh, I can do a 1.2 meter, which is half the size of this. Um, let's set that. Yeah, okay, so that'll... Oh, no. <laughs> That's too high. Um... At least once we get this dialed in, it'll be easier. Ooh, come on. Because I'm trying to keep the intersections flat. That's not very realistic either. Um, but at least, you know, at least we have that going for us. So I'm going to actually jump back into Surveyor 2, scoot this back to line it up with the curb here. And I think I'm going to call that good because, you know, it, it doesn't get much better than that. Honestly, I'm kind of impressed. This angle of road, it, it sort of works perfectly for it. Um, I'm going to jump back into Surveyor Classic because I don't know how to adjust the height in the same way that I do here. Um, it's just something that I don't know. I haven't bothered to figure it out. There's a lot of Surveyor 2 that I haven't bothered to figure out. There's a lot of Surveyor 2 that is, at, at current time, completely beyond me. And I don't know if and when I'm going to learn that. I think if I do learn it, it's if I do learn it, it's probably going to be because of TJ um, showing me stuff or jumping into a stream and, and telling me stuff or you know if we ever do more MPS stuff, it'll it'll sort of be learned along with that, you know, work sessions and things like that. Um, okay. Let's do this, and... Oh, shoot. Is this still straight? No. Okay, yes. Yes, it was straight. Uh, you... This, I think we can do without resorting to Surveyor 2. Um, I'll just place... Oh, well, no, we... we 
can't exactly. We're going to have to get in there at the end, but... Give me this. Give me the one right below it. Nope. Give me... Nope. There it is. Okay. I definitely can't argue with the idea that... Uh, that the setup of the menus... Oh, you know what? We did it just right, so I don't need to jump in the Surveyor 2 at all. Um, the setup of the menus where you can where you can always see the thumbnails of what you're working with... Like, I can't argue with the fact that that is very useful uh, in Surveyor 2. I'm not a huge fan of how obtrusive those menus are, how much space they take up on your screen, but honestly, it's... You know, I'd be lying if I, if I you know, said I didn't think it might be a valid trade. Okay. I wonder if I can copy this and just drop it in again, because it should be at the same angle. Um, so let's try... Let's try this. Okay. I want to cut these back a little bit. So let's first add in a spline point here. Straighten this, because... That's that's the problem we just made. Insert spline point here. Straighten this. I I am still certain that at this point it's going to be less work. Let's try to land this right in the middle. Insert spline point there. And I think we need to straighten this one. Yep. It did look a little bit off, although I don't know if that was an illusion or not. Um and so we'll grab this, and control C that, and then I think what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to add spline points back here, uh, straighten spline, insert spline point, that one I already have, this one, insert spline point, okay, we're just about there. And I could probably delete those two. Actually, I might, because I can line it up with the rulers. So, let's control V. Um, and then, I guess this is our... Which one is the... I guess this one? Come on. What is going on? What am I doing? Oh, God. Okay, hold on. Undo that. Let's 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 make some minor adjustments first. Uh, ground height, relative texture, none meshes, none. Uh, let's just say none on the ground height. Splines. Add effect layers, none. So we just want the splines. Nothing else. Nothing else. Let's see. Okay, so this is now our our point. Why does it do that? Okay. Um, and I slide this along the road. I love the fact that I managed to line that up almost perfectly. I don't like the fact that it's just spreading green everywhere. That's, that's a new one. Damn it. I was kind of hoping that that would uh, work. Hold on, if I control Z to here, I can go back to control A. Now, the fact that I can't do the the microstation reorient my uh, my cursor thing is a little bit, you know, that would be helpful. Um, let's see. Maybe I should just try to do it one cardinal at a time. Like, um... Like, the way I've always had to explain to people that aren't used to coordinates in Minecraft and get lost even with coordinates on. Now, uh, folks who know me know that I am vehemently anti-coordinates. Uh, I think that... I think that Minecraft is better off with the immersion uh, of being able to get lost. <laughs> and, uh, you know... If without that, you take uh, you take all of those tools, your compass, your map. What do they do? 
you know, maps are nice for map walls. Other than that, you know, nothing. What was the point of, what's the point of having maps in the game if you always know where you are all the time anyway, aside from a decorative thing? That just doesn't seem right to me. Let me have, uh, let me, let me make maps useful by making the game a little bit more challenging. And the thing is, when I started playing Minecraft without the coordinates on again, man, my immersion went through the roof. Like, suddenly, going somewhere was a genuine, like, challenge, or not getting lost was a, was a challenge. Especially in Armada world and Coggers, where you have a difficulty finding iron uh, sometimes. If you don't have iron, then you can't make a... Oh, that's not right. If you don't have iron, you can't make a an atlas or a compass or anything like that. You were just sort of left to making uh, making like pillars wherever you go, right? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna undo what I just did because I don't think the adjustments I just made were helping anything. And these guys, okay, yeah, this this is a little bit jank. I won't I won't lie. Um, I wonder if I can just set. Maybe there's too many spline points over here. Um, set that. Set this. And then point eight three, just to make it a little bit higher as we did before. Or just the middle. Okay, that's what it was. Okay. I think it's being a menace to society in the other room, apparently. Okay, grab this. Let's lower that. It looks a little worse than the other one, but honestly... Okay. So, this one, this one, and this one. Those are the intersections. Those are the intersections that we have to do. That we have left to do. Oh, that one. Well, everything on this side, this is, this is, uh, that's Wacky Town over there. I'm not fixing that yet. We do have to do this stuff, but I'm still not sure what this road is going to look like heading out of town. At least, I'm not entirely sure. Um... Uh, I want to fix this, but honestly, the tracks getting a little buried isn't... Like, I don't think that's a bad thing. But the other thing is, if I do fix this, most of this stuff is... Yeah, it's it's not going to be a problem. Okay. Let's flatten this out. I can hear them discussing food in the other room, and I'm, I'm thinking, like, my brain's turned on. Oh, this one. That one has to be done, too. Um, this is going to be a new experience. I feel like if I do one or two intersections per stream, we'll be done pretty soon, pretty quickly. Um, I just don't have the energy to, to do all this fiddling every time. So, I think... So what do we use to get across this gap here? Because I remember this being a problem. What? So we have a new shop's menu. Okay. Have a new pizza. Okay. We have a new pizza. Nashville hot chicken pizza. Nashville. That's not an old menu? Oh, I guess it does no. say new right there. Because they got... Uh, yeah, sold. So we're going to do the, the, the deal 28. So one large gourmet pizza and one large one-topping pizza. Okay, what's going to be the one-topping pizza? Cheese. Just like oh. cheese, if you want to eat pepperoni. Yeah, doesn't... Does cheese count... Cheese doesn't usually count as a topping some when you... Some places do, some places don't. I feel like the places that do... Like... It sucks when they It's do. like not numbering the ground floor. Yeah. It's like, that is the first floor of the building. Yeah. Like, it's not a... It's... I mean... Yeah. It's not a topping. That's not fair. 
They should just call a one topping pizza a cheese pizza then because what what you're if you're taking cheese off, what are you putting on? I mean, when I worked in the pizza place, there was this lady that just ordered like dough and the garlic sauce. Like so garlic bread. Yeah, she was So she that's was not that's not a pizza. <laughs> that yeah. Major yeah. Yeah. None pizza left beef. <laughs> Poppers. What, as a choice between the two, or? I mean. Because. Oh, God damn it, I keep going the wrong way with this. Matzo, I mean, matzo sticks are okay. Alright. I'm just not, you know. They're not my favorite. I feel like they're always. What's the word? I feel like mozzarella sticks. They're kind of. Like, they're objectively worse than both poppers and fried ravioli. Like, fried ravioli is elevated mozzarella sticks to me. But if if you guys want, oh right, they don't. I'm just I'm just saying, you know, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to mozzarella sticks. Poppers, you don't get a lot of though. How many mozzarella sticks do you get? Seven. You get seven. That's it. Yeah, seven, seven, seven. I'd rather get mozzarella. I'd rather get poppers. What about you? Okay. I don't care. I'll eat okay. Well, you've been outvoted anyway, so you're just you're just being asked for. You know. Uh, what card do you want to use? Uh, the house card. Okay. Alright, have fun. Okay. <laughs> oh, dang. I'm, for this new pizza. I'm also excited for this new pizza. I don't think there's a one sidewalk version of this road, which, that's kind of annoying. I think I've downloaded all of the Macadam roads. I'm, I'll double check. Because I thought about this last time, but I'm pretty sure I have all of them. Yeah, because I know we missed a few on the NPS. Oops. Macadam. I'll just jump into this. Uh, it looks like this is the only one that we don't, that I don't have. Uh, oh, this one, no traffic clone. That's a clone. Where's, where's Mason when you need him? Okay. Um, so grab this, and I want the stripeless, sidewalkless road. Let's do that. I am so over these intersections. Did, we didn't have a lot of skew intersections in Geiger, did we? Oh, I, I don't. Oh, did you? Yeah, the newer part of town that I was working on before the service started killing itself. Mm -hmm. That was like all this. Yeah, this is gross. I hate doing this. Yeah. I tried to, as I built the city, I was like, alright, let's do less angled roads. Yeah. So now I have, like, one, like, thoroughfare that's angled, and everything else is great. Yeah, it's a lot less of a, a lot less of a headache. Yeah, I kind of just went over there. Yeah, too bad we broke it. <laughs> like, <laughs> full-on broke it. I should save, um... save the, uh, the old Union Station area or whatever it is. Yeah, that ended up coming out pretty good. I should save and it that. hasn't exploded. Yeah, I should save that to the thing, and uh, the, uh, the intersection with Jader's line that I built, like the over-under. Yeah, line. yeah, yeah. I want to save that whole area that I was working, because that's like the most recent city build, building that I'm genuinely upset about the, uh, about Union Station just, like, dissolving. Yeah. Uh, all of I was so proud of that track work, and now it's gone. I mean, we could revert it. I think they have auto save. Like, I think they have backups. Do they? Yeah. Well, why did we never do that? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> I feel like when everything started melting down, we should have just gone, okay, can we go back to before we converted the whole route and just, you know, yeah, like take the hit but be able route. to continue? Yeah. Because... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I feel like, yeah, I'd still be bummed about the stuff that I lost, because I did do a lot of work afterward, and you did a ton of work afterward. Hello, Comrade Pat. Oh, well, shoot. Even if it was just, Going like, right up until uh, Mason came on. And shifted the whole station over. The whole thing. Or but even then. Like, right before I made it, PhD terrain. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking of. It's just, damn, damn that was so long ago. Was that after we redid New Union Station? 
Okay. And it was, I think... It was fairly after. recent. Like, it was, like, like a lot of the major progress on Geiger had happened. I, I literally, like, we would actually make some progress because the hill got destroyed. Oh, I forgot about the hill. The whole Dean station. Yeah. So, we would get that back. Uh, we would, um... We would get back... Well, I, we would lose some of the city that I built, but, I mean... If I save it to the scrapbook, and then back... That's up, true. I you can just drop it back, back in. in. Uh... Yeah, so I'm working on some really fiddly intersections here in South Bellington. Or, no, is this... This is regular Bellington. Um, and, oh man, I'm so not... I'm so not enjoying this. Uh, not really. <laughs> I just kind of like Nashville hot. I mean, yeah, honestly... I was like, go for it. I heard the words Nashville hot, and I was sold. It's their Nashville hot chicken... Smothered in cheese and pickles and buttermilk ranch. Alright. Yeah. Oh, so I assume you got to the word pickles and you were sold, babe? I didn't even read the description so it's either. Like, I saw oh, okay. that so hot and I was like, I want Exactly. Oh, well, we're on the same page. I saw a, or I had a fantastic Nashville hot chicken sandwich in the Reading Terminal. Um, it was, it was like <laughs> the last, it was the last meal I had with my dad in the Reading Terminal before we left Philly last time. And... I need to figure out some itinerary stuff for our next Philadelphia trip, which is like a month away at this point. God, and hey, sorry, I what? This one is so freaking annoying. <laughs> Ten okay. people just like my post. No, they don't know the answer, but they want the answer. Um, and yeah, I need to figure out the logistics and and travel planning and stuff for that. Going to see uh, New Jersey and Dry Dock and everything, and. Uh, I know that we're going to spend a day in Philly, and I know that we're going to spend, like, at least two of those meals in the Reading Terminal, because my dad loved that place. Like, maybe it's, maybe it's just him getting a little bit older and, you know, coming out of whatever shell he ever had, but the thing is, you know, my dad has never been the most expressive person, and I've, I've... He's been more expressive, like, in the last couple of years with me than I think I had ever really seen. I mean, that's not to say that he was bad or distant, but he was just a little bit, uh, a little bit closed down a lot of the time. Uh, that's just him. But he's, you know, I am, I owe so much to my dad. He's such an incredibly cool guy, such an incredibly chill guy, like, doesn't, Hardly get angry at anything. Very handy. I mean... Fantastic. Okay. Let me... Make this one here. This one here. Yeah, Gloria learned that O.J. Simpson died. Like, ten minutes ago. Uh, well, it feels like ten minutes. But... I didn't know they didn't know. I didn't know you didn't know. Uh, otherwise, I would have said something, because I love breaking news to Gloria. Celebrity news to Gloria, because I never know the celebrity news. And they always know the celebrity news. Okay, let's uh, scoot this. Oh, you know what? We've got to do... Let's overlay these, I guess. So bring this up to here. Yeah, that's fine. And then bring this up to here. Bus. Suddenly. Bus. Uh, and then this. One of my podcasts told me about a guy um, who was nicknamed Bussy. Because he was traded. Like, I think he was on, like, a basketball team. And he was traded to another team in exchange for their bus. Because they needed a bus. Um, so he became bussy. Hi, TJ. Alright, that's enough intersections for me today. I need to figure out what to what to do from here. Um, there's lots of scenery work to be done. Last time we ended off working on the dirt track down here. And sort of bringing in the the woods up against that. 
I was thinking of throwing in another scrapyard or some kind of industry back here behind this uh, antique mall. Some sort, whatever that is. It looks like an antique mall. Um, this and this, I honestly think these two things can go... These two things can go over... Shift click. Over by the stadium area, over by the school. I don't know exactly what to do with them yet, but they can go in the pile of buildings over here. Yeah. Again, I'm not I'm not totally sold on this area, especially these industries and this school and uh, sort of the track work down here. I know there are going to be some more industries in this direction, like right here area, but I'm not entirely sure what that's going to look like. This area, I also don't really know what to do with. It might end up just being mostly trees. I might add, like, a, a gravel road along the right-of-way here, but I don't know. I just don't have a firm plan for that. But I'd like to move the frontier of where the scenery is done, which means probably starting here and going this way, filling this in. If we're going to do this as a scrapyard, then that's fairly easy. We've just done plenty of those, you know. There are scrapyards all over the place. If anyone has an idea for what can go back here, whether that's an industry or not, you know, feel free to say so. If not, what I think I'm going to do is fence this in and still have, like, a, a junk pile sort of area, um, but not with the not with the railroad connection. This, this can be a lot of... Uh, this can be a lot of, you know, sort of back shop space. I know we have technically a back door to this building. I think I can attach a, a line to it. Let's see. Yeah, so there's a spline point. If I come out of here in a straight line, and I can, yeah, I can hook into this. Okay. So we have that tied in. What else can we put back here? I was thinking... I mean, we could always thread a track through here, or we could add some kind of repair-in-place track in the, in the way back. Right. If I jump into 2.0, I can tighten this turn up a lot by just scooting the spline point in like that. Yeah, and that'll allow me to put another track in. Maybe with a small building of its own. I think we're underselling how much stuff we should have in terms of shop space and, and things like that and machinery area because, I mean, a lot of these railroad complexes had like, huge shops. And, yeah, okay, this isn't a big railroad, but even still, I feel like we're underselling it. I feel like we're, we're, we're going a little small. We're on the small side. That has to do with the way this railroad is, but even still. Okay, so we have a switch off of this for whatever, just right there. Not sure what. Don't really have a plan for it. I'd like to find some kind of maintenance building to put back here. Okay, we've got a buffer stop. Let's drop that down. One of the things we need to do is buffer stops all around. Uh, uh, things as well. The, uh, the switch stands need to get sorted out. Yeah. Part of me would like to do another one. Just another extra space back here. But I don't even think this is going to be a functional industry. It might just be an extra track. Honestly, I could maybe put that on this side and have it longer. I just instinctively made it parallel to this, and that doesn't really make a ton of sense. Uh, if you've got an idea, feel free to say so. So, let's put up some fences around this area. Let's just 
chain link fence. All one word. Well, not all one word. But, yeah, okay, that looks pretty good. Let's put it along here, and then let's go parallel to the road in this direction. Wish I could see it when I was zoomed out, but you really can't. Um, I want to break the spline point. Come on, break the spline point. There we go. Break the spline point. That's pretty parallel. And then I think I want to cleave this off at here vertically or, you know, perpendicularly to that. That looks pretty good. It looks like metal panels when you zoom out, which isn't really great. Um, kind of wish it didn't. So we're going to box off an area here, and we're going to put a lot of junk in here. Again, not scrapyard junk, just like junk junk. Town landfill, I don't know. I should have probably used rulers to get this to be properly square. It doesn't help that I can't look at it from immediately above, but I think it's fine the way it is. Okay. Got that sealed off. Uh, and I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue this fence. Because if I continue this fence like this... Oh, shoot. If I continue it like this, if I could actually start it from a spline point back here and continue it forward... Honestly, using Surveyor 2 is probably smart here. Do this, drag forward. And end it right there. And I think this whole area back here is just going to be trees. If I can get some sort of workshop warehouse building to put up against this fence, I think I will do that. Let's see what we've got in terms of random buildings. This guy is not really a contender. This might be, if if it was a little bit more of an upscale operation, it might make sense to do that. Let's look over here, the junk we have over here. Mm, no. Although this is neat because it's got that corner. No, I want something maybe just a couple stories made of brick. Relatively uninteresting as just a long building to, to make up the space. Honestly, if I could sink this into the ground and have the door up here, maybe I would do that. Um, using this for the fourth time in this town was probably not the play. Um, did I... Are these two buildings? No, that's one building. I thought the, the part sticking out was its own thing. What about you? You're, a, you're part of the sugar mill, aren't you? Um, Sunset District House. This is nice, it's just not very helpful. So, TA Center. What are you? That's kind of cool. I've never seen that building before. I guess that helps with, uh, that's what this helps with. The, the menu being visible, everything being visible. Let's see, what is that bridge? Oh, shoot. That's a nice bridge. I should use this somewhere. I don't know where, but somewhere. Do I have a pile of bridges? I think I used them all. I ended up using all the bridges. I'll just put this over here. We'll have the slowly advancing pile of stuff that I find interesting. Again, the physical pick list. Nothing that I've used in town, I think, is the right play. Because I don't want it to look doubled up. Honestly, maybe I could put this back there. But that looks more of like a factory building than a railroad shop. Let's see. What is this? Oh, that's actually really nice, except it has all the doors on the front, which I don't want. Um, yeah, we're going to get all the storefronts, which... Helpful not... In this case, I need railroad shops. I need railroad shops that don't actually have a 
like a like a track that goes through them. Yeah, like this. This does have one track, but PR erecting shop. I mean, very nice. Probably will use that in the future somewhere. Don't know where though. Or spark bag shop. Yeah, this is actually pretty perfect for what I need. It's much too large for this railroad, but it'll do. The only problem is it's in the way. I cannot fit it. It's slightly too long, and that's a problem. If I scoot it all the way up to the road, no, still doesn't fit. What if I rotate it 90 degrees or 180 degrees? Then I slide it back as far as I can. How far do I have to slide it back until it works? That's that should be the question I'm asking because I can move that fence. It's just a spur of the moment idea, and I really like this building. Oh shoot! I hit, I hit, I held control. I hadn't learned that until like a week ago, but I don't need to keep doing it. Okay, so if instead of bringing this in on a straight line, we bring it in like that, then it will fit. So let's jump back into Surveyor Classic and make it fit. You. Nope. Spline too short. Okay. I love it when it thinks I want to click directly on the spline point. Alright, well there goes all that hard work. All that hard work for putting in the, uh, the thing. Okay, did that delete the, the switch stand? Yes. Perfect. Grab this, delete it, and then here. I think I want an S curve like this. Oh, shoot. I don't know why that was straightened. I guess I was worried about it. Oh, no, that's right. It was, it was its own. It, it led into a curve a minute ago. So, maybe if I put my brain on, I'd be able to figure that out. Okay. So I can sacrifice a little bit of this distance. Yeah, I mean, that is a tight curve. Very, very tight switch. I don't know why you'd need to get out of the back shop like this. But I want to have the option. The other thing is... I don't scoot this over. Yeah, okay. Okay. Is this straightened? Yeah, it is. Just a very, very tight switch. And that's kind of okay because of the situation. But it's not ideal. I can definitely make more room, though. I don't know why I'm not. I can pull that corner out and just get a better switch out of it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I don't think, I don't think we'll clip the side of the building with this one. On the flip side, I don't think that I'm going to be able to add a spur track back here like I was initially considering. But that's fine. If I had the option, I would have added, a, like, a transfer table back here, but that's that also, you know, there's no reason to do that. This is just a big, big old machine shop. Um, actually, what I could do is throw in a little powerhouse somewhere. Maybe just on the back corner of this. Okay, let's do that, slide that back to just beyond the edge there. Oh, shoot. Slide that up to make it meet the edge. Please. Hold shift. Perfect. Just put the extra post in. Okay. Cool, so we got that. We got that. 
again, I'm thinking about a powerhouse. And I don't... Because one, this is like a... This is a coal dealer shop, right? Coal order office. Good evening, Comrade Orion. Um, it's a coal order office. I, I mean, this this building kind of looms. I, I, I do... I, mm, I wish I had something smaller. I like it, but I wish I had something smaller. Yeah. Back shop building. Well, the thing is, our back shop building is kind of small, right? Oh, shoot. Get, out, get that out of here. Like, this over here is kind of small. Which... I mean, it doesn't really make a difference. This is a this is a detached building. It's probably the newest building that that is on the railroad in terms of maintenance facilities. Um, yeah, I'll probably just leave it the way that it is. Part of part of uh, me wants to just like put a little dummy siding here, but that doesn't. You know, why would I do that? Orion asks, how is totality for those in the path? And I have to say that it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I, was, I wasn't in the path, so I went and got in the path. Uh, I wasn't in the path, so Gloria and I drove up to Vermont. We took Lafayette. It was his birthday. We drove up to Vermont uh, into an area that was in the path of, of totality. And... I'm actually going to talk about this on the next podcast this weekend because I had us post up next to some tracks belonging to part of the Vermont rail system, you know, just in case, right? Uh, so we were in the path of, of the totality. We were in the path of a uh, potential VRS train, and it did show up. We, you know... Complete blind luck, you know, I didn't really research ahead of time, I just made sure that the tracks were active. And it turns out, you know, it uh, it it completely worked out. We got a train to come by about 30 minutes before totality. I can't imagine how amazing it would have been uh, if it had come by after, or during, rather. Um, not after. Yeah. Damn, if it had missed the totality, it would have been amazing. No, but it was it was stunning, you know? Seeing the seeing the corona of the sun visible when the sun itself was blocked by the moon was like I'm almost completely beyond words. Anyway, let's throw a couple of trailers in the end here. Um not the log trailers. Where's the... Oh, yeah, the Frohauf uh, trailers. So we'll park those at the back here. And then we will do some tent... Throw down a couple of uh, tents here. And then, let's see, how about like an RV, or, or an Airstream trailer? No, we don't have an Airstream trailer? That's kind of interesting. I was, I'm actually a little bit surprised by that. Is there one in the DLS? There is. Airstream travel trailer. Okay. Uh, let me save, and then I'm going to try to download this. As we know, we could crash the game doing this. But I do definitely want an Airstream trailer to put over here, or really a couple, because it's the 50s-ish, and that's what, you know, that's what belongs, right? That's what would look right. Come on, you can, this is taking a second to save, okay. Airstream trailer, going to right-click download on that, that's an SAP asset. I'm going to also get rid of that so that we don't, we don't piss the game off too much. Come on. Don't crash. You can do it. I don't have... 
I don't even think I have like a, a motorbike. The bike rack. I mean, you could always use something like this for a BMX, right? Which the only time that I've been on a course like this was to do like BMX esque shenanigans. No, I don't have any BMX bike. Oh, what about like a dirt bike? No, I don't have a dirt bike. Dirt. Dirty Jeep with driver. Two tone sedan. Um, so that's kind of fun. Dump truck maintenance away dirty. I mean, I definitely will park this guy at the end of the. Uh, the area here and maybe we'll have like one incredibly small um, one incredibly small uh, permanent structure maybe just like a uh, I'll, I'll type in shed and see what we get I know we get a lot of sheds but I probably don't want brick that seems like overkill Yeah, how about this? Uh, anyway. Hello, flying scoots. So, yeah, I'm going to work on this a little bit. Let's see. And we have we have some bigger stuff, too. But honestly, I don't think having anything bigger is, is worthwhile or reasonable for this, like, dirt track area. Okay, let's pull up the Airstream trailer now that it's downloaded. SAP Airstream trailer. Um, that is a very, very high poly and very nice, uh, that's a very nice Airstream trailer. Yeah, it's a, if you have a concrete shed, it's more like a small bunker. Um, oh, what is this? Look at the, we get the bait shop. That's cool. We got to use that somewhere. Um, yeah, retro futuristic. We have the, uh, oh god, Baha'i Honda Bridge. This is part of the, the Pacific Extension, isn't it? <laughs> Where's East? Somehow his fault. Okay, um, we have uh, some pigs. <laughs> we have literal pigs. Okay, uh, abandoned laundry, abandoned, uh, abandoned house with graffiti. This looks like a signal tower. It is a signal tower. That's really cool, though. That is a really nice thing. Um, we've got all sorts of derelict stuff. Which, wow, I don't remember having any of these. Um, so let's drop down some 50s cars in the, the lot here. Um, and maybe another Airstream trailer or two. Because... I mean, there's really no other option for this period in time. Uh, oh, shoot. I didn't want the second one over there. Yeah, there really aren't any other options for this, this, you know, this sector in time, I don't think, other than maybe like a Winnebago. No. I don't know how to spell Winnebago, and it just keeps taking me back to Amy Winehouse. Um... Weird one, but that's what we have. Um, we don't have dirt bikes, so I'm just going to throw down like a couple of bike racks over here. Oh, they hover. <laughs> they start well above the ground. That's kind of funny. So yeah, bike rack. Not quite dirt bikes, but they're something. I also think I want some picnic tables. Stop hovering. What is this one? This one is minus 1.4. So we can get this one down to minus 1.4. Call it good. Uh, let's put another Airstream trailer next to the first one. We only have the one. I don't know what to do with it otherwise. Uh, we need some cars back here. So park 1950s cars one. That'll do right here and then how about hood milk delivery truck yeah that'll do it Santa Fe whoa where did this come from 
Whoa. Where did we get this? This is awesome. We have to use this somewhere. I don't know where, but somewhere. I mean, where would we need this? Probably Geiger. I can't think of another place where we'd need such a large roundhouse. Maybe Geiger or Tombstone. Uh, ordered from this universe's version of Kenton, Ohio. Exactly. Um, anyway. So we're going to put that over there. I don't know what this is. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. I think I'm going to put this in the corner of the fenced off lot. <laughs> I don't know what else to do with that. Just in case you're wondering, we got Jesus. <laughs> okay. Um, sand house, sand fuel filler sample. Um, okay, I wanted some picnic tables. So let's just find table. Um, we have some other turntables. We have actually a lot more turntables than I remember us having, which is a weird one. Um... You need Jesus. Um, I don't know what else to do. No, 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 no. Matt, the delete button is not an option. We cannot... Are you Are you trying to delete Jesus? Okay. Um, table. Table. Yeah, that's, it's what it says on the tin. We're going to put table over there. Sussex Garden Table. That's oddly specific. Stable and coach house. Stable. What's... What if I put a stable down here? I'll put a stable down here, like, at the end of the... At the end of the road. And I'll move these, uh... I'll move these trailers to somewhere else. To, like, over here. I'll move one to over here by the dump truck. I'll figure out a good spot for the other one. I mean, I don't, I don't recommend that people start taking horses around a BMX track or a, you know, a, a dirt track like this. But if you want to, if you want to, the option's there. You got the stable. Um, this portable generator is an interesting one. I could put that down. Oh, what is this? Look at this little thing. It's so, it's so little. This is also a three-foot gauge turntable with standard gauge tracks attached. And even then, look how short it is. I don't know what you can fit in there. Um, it might not even be three foot. That might be two foot. Oh, now we got some actual stables. Oh, here's Jesus. It's the modern, very modern looking church. Uh, I don't know how that has table in it. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. We roll with the punches here. Okay. So I just need to... Oh, that's the wrong kind of grass. I need to grass the rest of this area up and call it good. Um, I think, like, this is okay for the inside here. A shea, maybe, if you allow overhangs. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe you could squeeze a shea into there. I should experiment with that, because if that's a good... If that is three-foot gauge then it might actually be kind of useful in the future. If it's two-foot gauge, probably not unless I make a really overzealous, like, mine tramway somewhere. Uh, which is not out of the question. I know when I started this project, my, my official statement was, we're just doing standard gauge, and we've gotten away from that almost as far as possible with remaking the, uh, the Geiger Mountains Railroad as an official part of this. You know, re reviving my three foot my three foot uh, uh, affection which I haven't had really in a long time sorry Mark um, sorry Heiss I can't uh, I'm, there, it's just not my favorite narrow gauge two foot is what the people want oh shoot I hit the wrong button make that much smaller please Okay, so let's go here, here, here. Let's get this area done. You know, let's get this to the point where I can move on a little bit. I've done a little bit of fiddling around. I've done the road work that I need to do. 
and I just need to start sort of filling out blocks. I mean, honestly, I should go back and I should do some more... Uh, yes, baby. Mm, whatever you think is reasonable. Um... Are they here? Oh shoot, they got here fast. Uh that's that's I'm surprised the food is here already. Uh I did not expect that. I expected to have Yeah, I expected it to take longer. Um Railroads online burned out the love for for three foot. Can't even switch cars or go over five miles an hour now, it's twenty four. UI looks at if looks like it hasn't moved past the early two thousands. Are you talking about, like, the newest UI? Like, the third UI? Because I actually like that better than the second one. Although, in complete fairness, I never played with either of them, and to be honest, I, just like I'm anti-coordinates in Minecraft, I'm anti-UI in train driving games. Uh, if the cab controls are competent, which they are really in in Rare is Online, honestly, if, if there's one bright spot is that the cab controls all, all pretty much work. Um... What is this? Um, maybe I'll put this over here. Um, this will be for the for the for like the flag, right? What is this? This is a rail car loading stand. No, this will this is for the checkered flag. Um, ooh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Um, no, no, not that. Not not any of those things. This. Um, bike path. No, that, that won't look good. Um, path gravel. Yeah, okay, now we're, now we're cooking with gas. Watch this. Um, yeah, I was personally kind of annoyed, uh, when the original driving UI was added to Rare Arts Online. Hi, East. Um, because... I was like, no, you know, you gotta be able to, you gotta drive it in the cab, you know, no, no third person can, get that out of here, that's, you know, that makes the game too easy, re, uh, but, no, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter, I, I haven't played RRO in a while, and beyond that, you know, you should at least have the option to do it. Gloria is saying, oh my god, presumably about the pizza, and I'm wondering what's going on out there. That Nashville hot chicken looks divine. Well, I'm more worried about how it tastes. Oh man, I can't I can't wait to eat this. Do you, do you want a piece now? No, I don't want to eat on stream. I might I might get too hungry and change my mind, but I don't want to eat on stream. Okay. Y'all don't need to watch me eat. Um Let's spin some of these around. Okay. Um, okay. Let's do this, and then add... He's looking at cows. Man, I'm so excited to eat this. Okay. Hamburger. Um, okay, let's do this. Honestly, I should have asked for... Yeah, so I... Was the other pizza pepperoni? Did, is that what we went with? I got pepperoni. Sweet. I've been craving pepperoni all day. I didn't even think about that until we after, until after we ordered the pizzas. And it's like, oh yeah, right. There's like the classic quintessential pizza topping. And I didn't even like ask about it. I woke up craving... There's a, there's an, there's a sandwich at a breakfast place that I go to. It's called the Italian. Uh, no, East, don't worry. I'm hungry, too. Also, hi, hungry. I'm dad. Um, it's called the Italian, and it's, uh, you know, egg and cheese on an onion bagel with pepperoni. And, oh, it's so good. I just can't keep myself from getting it every time I go there. And I sort of woke up this morning fantasizing about it, even though I only ever get it uh, on the rare occasion where I'm going to the Model Railroad in the morning. And sadly, it's the rare occasion, because, you know, I'm the president, uh, and I would like to get there more often, and I have even had one of the, the rowdier old guys, like, how come you're never there on Saturday? We should have the officers there on Saturday. 
And I was just like, I don't know, find me more hours in the day. You know, what do you want from me? Um, just had a burger with lettuce and Wickle's spicy red hoagie spread. Oh, God, here we are with the hoagie spread again. Um, what's everyone's favorite? What's, yeah, what's everyone's favorite condiment? What, what do you think is, like, the greatest, you know, the goat of condiments? Because I have a pretty hard and fast answer. Uh, I'll let everyone think about it and not be, not be influenced by me for a second, but I want, I want to know what your, what your goat condiment is. Uh... Barbecue sauce is a good one. Mine is honey, uh, honey mustard. I'll put honey mustard on anything. I'll put it on my sandwich. I'll put it on my like fries, my pierogies, whatever. It's it's my go-to dipping sauce. Um, like ketchup is pretty good. You can't really go wrong with ketchup. I feel, but it's not. You know, it's just okay. I sound just like your dad. Well, funny, funny that. Um, Uh, Alright, we're going to park another trailer over here. Getting that trailer in there has got to be a nightmare, but whatever. Uh, Wickle Spicy Red, Hoagie Spread, Hoagie Relish, because I could eat a whole jar in one sitting. God. Ketchup and Ranch, and that was pretty good? That's an interesting one. Had not Have not heard that one before. Um, do we have, like, a Jersey Barrier Spline? Ah, we have exactly a Jersey Barrier. Wait, what is this? Oh, okay. Um, Blair's Death Sauce because the bottle comes with a Skull Keychain? What? What does that even taste like? Is it hot sauce? Because that would kind of make sense. But then again, I, I appreciate like the leaning into... We're, we're going to go into one of my favorite topics again. I appreciate the leaning into, like, you have to be super manly, uh, whatever, thing, because of, um, has anyone seen, like, liquid death around? I bought, I had to buy some at a concert. It was the only water available. Liquid death is just water. And I love, I love that. I thoroughly appreciate that. I'm so happy that it's, like, acknowledge that it's like yes no water is the best drink um <laughs> okay so let's fill some of this area in with the grass we're gonna need to bring in the trees around the outside too but this area this is a great little corner of the world i'm actually quite happy with it okay. yes baby you ready for this? is it really good is this your piece yeah. nice your piece? It looks like a lot. Could you have some fresh water, please? Yeah. Like Do long. Like poppers first. There's three uh, poppers left. I mean, I'll have the poppers now. That's that's less poppers crazy for me to. No. I, I'm not. I don't need ranch with my poppers. What do I look like? Um. I can handle the heat. I'm surprised how good I am with hot stuff these days. Used to be a lot worse. Thank you. I don't need half the useless BS they added for the UI. I play games with basic utilitarian UI, and the BS takes away from the game. If you could just turn the UI off, I'd be happy. I'm not sure if you can. You probably can. I think you used to be able to drive without the AI, or the AI, the UI. And you can drive without the UI in Railroad, or you can drive without the UI in, in you know, most of these first-person train driving games. And by most, I mean, like, two out of three. Um... And, again, separating the games from the simulators here, the, you know, the, like, train sim and trains, they don't count as games, they're not games, they're simulators, blah, blah, blah. That's not me being elitist, it's just drawing a distinction. Um, uh, if I could have the sliders and not have to go into the cab, that'd be nice. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're going to give me a driving UI, give me a cool driving UI. Thank you. Um, I honestly am more of a fan of, you know, like, I appreciate and respect the simplicity of the original sliders, um, from, you know, the, you know, the first iteration of the UI in RRO. I appreciate, you know, the simplicity of it, but it did look unfinished, like it felt unfinished. Like, the UI now and the UI previously 
looks pretty goofy, but it does look more deliberate. I guess that's a point in its favor, even if it is just straight up uglier. Um, if they actually use the UI to do something like model the steam chest, that would be neat. Um, but speaking of which, I am, boy, I, I should go and sign on to the, the Patreon for Century of Steam, because I am definitely excited for that game, uh, more than I was before I started watching the devlogs. And it, I mean, the same thing happened to me with Railroader, because I really wasn't interested in it. It was just like, oh, here comes another game. You know, here comes another Railroad game. I'm, I'm, I'm content with Railroads Online right now. Um... And then I watched the devlog about the AI and about the big map and about, you know, and I, I learned about how the, the switching arrangement and the industry arrangement works, which is something I've praised to Helen back. You guys know that. And I was immediately in love. Oh, no, sorry. The thing that I was immediately in love with, the switch tower, the signal tower, the, the ability to sit in the Bryson signal tower. Now, for the folks that are on the Discord, you know that our upcoming community playdate is Railroader. I don't think that it's going to be streamed because I don't know who all is going to attend. I'm not going to be there. I know East isn't going to uh, be there to host. Of course, he also doesn't have Railroader, um, but he's just an easy second for setting up the streaming. And he's my son and my heir, so, you know, it, it works out like that. Um, at any rate... Uh, I don't think anyone is going to be streaming the this upcoming community playdate, um, but it is happening. It's supposed to be a relatively intricate run session. Casey might be the one putting it on, and she has drawn up several pages of documentation for how to run her basically completely fleshed out save, which was set up in Sandbox, but, you know, we still we still love it. Uh, I'd like to get to that stage with a regular Railroader save, given time. But the thing is, Casey's save is so expansive, it's tough to not just play on that and not make progress on the other ones. I'm going to have one of these poppers. They're pretty damn good. Okay. So, this area... I definitely just have to fill with the grass. I mean, oh, maybe I make a little div and I put a water feature in it. That that makes sense. Let's lower this. Uh, this 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 this. And we're gonna do a very small water feature, so that's probably enough of a deviation. Come on. What height are we at? Ah, there's the water. Water trap, but for motorcycles, yeah. That's something I'll probably have to do at some point. I'll probably have to build a golf course, or at least a mini golf course, on Tolbrind somewhere. I could always say that Tolbrind is, is based in abolished golf or something, because of the amount of space it takes up, but I'm, not, I'm probably not going to do that. Um... Okay, there's our water feature. Let's grab some dirt. Oh, where's where's my nearest pile of dirt? Where's my nearest river that I can get the dirt out of the bottom of? Here we go. Oh, is this the same? No, it's not the same. Okay. Um, oh, I need to build a golf course so I can run a railroad through it. Yes, that's a very good point. I need a golf course that I can put a branch line through. That definitely is not out of the question. That is a good idea. I don't know what branch line I would do that on. I, I can look at the map later and sort of figure that out. Uh, Gold Rush finally has new content for those interesting console players. Won the poll on either adding multiplayer or lesser system support. So I'm kind of annoyed because they can add both. Gold Rush. I think we talked about that before, but I don't remember what it is. Um, so, let's do this. 
Uh, I have been enjoying the new content in Buckshot Roulette that recently came out. Um, three foot gauge for the lulz. Uh, I didn't have the game before. I watched too many videos on it, and I was just like, okay, I've got to, I've got to buy this game now. It's just one of those things where I had in, I had indulged in the content too much to the point where I needed to buy that game. Oh, the mine, the gold mining sim. Oh, okay, right. Yes, now I, now I recall. Um, well, we can add both, I suppose, but dev time, dev time is precious. Um, Buckshot Roulette is on sale right now. It's like two fifty. They just added a bunch of new stuff and also multiplayer is coming down the pipe if it's not here already. Uh. Can't recommend it enough. It's surprising. It's a surprisingly simple and addictive game. I'm gonna see how. I'm gonna see what kind of high score I can get. Do they have like uh, that metal moving movable fence as an asset, as a spine asset? Oh, what for like uh, letting people on and off sort of thing? Yeah, like to like yeah for spectators and stuff. That, would be like that is a metal moving fence. You know what I mean? It's like the one, it's like the carnival fencing where it's like a bar, a, a, like a curved bar with like the metal spokes. Like, it's like the most, like, generic metal fence you can find. Hold on, let, let's see, let's see, let's look at fences. I don't know if it's even named, I don't even know, I don't know what it's called. Um, worm, <laughs> worm fence. Worm fence. Um, alright, not wooden fence, wire fences, white wood, white race course fence, what the heck. I guess so, yeah. It's also completely two-dimensional. That's kind of funny. It is zero polygons. Um, trackside fence, trackside fence. Um, whatever the heck this is. Some kind of wire fence for farms. Um, it's four bar fence. Oh, 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 those. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean... This is one at the top of the street that uh, blocks off access to the college campus that I definitely didn't, like, push aside because I wanted to go for a walk. Um, could just go around the other way, but... Uh, industrial fence? No. Um, I wonder what it would be called. I could imagine it being called, like, a carnival fence, you know? Yeah. Um, fence... Uh, no, nothing's jumping out at me. Metal rod? Metal rod? Where'd you see that? No, oh, metal red. That's kind of neat. Not what you're talking about, but yeah. Um, crash barrier. Oh, it's a... It's a... Guide rail. Um, yeah, I guess... I don't know. I don't... Fence coaster. Roller coaster fence. Okay. No, so... I guess I don't have that. That would be nice to have, though. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this, except I need to add trees. At least a couple, right? At least a couple little ones. Oh, come on. Let me have the birch tree. Gold Rush is now Gold Mining Simulator. Wait until they call it Gold Rush Online. Actually, I think I'm going to replace this with a Weeping Willow that's right up here against the water feature. And then maybe a, a Sugar Maple behind it somewhere. And then a couple of stumps, how about? Stumo stump. Forest stump. Oh, I've seen that movie. Uh, stumps and rocks, rock one seasonal. You can get really, really, like, specific with this. I think I'm just going to leave, you know, a couple of those kind of stumps, because that's, that's the only thing I can think of. Part of me wants to put a tree in the middle here, though. 
I don't think it's realistic. I think they would have cleared this area out pretty well. Um, so, this is a little far from the sidewalk because it's crooked. Yeah, it doesn't quite line up. There, that lines up a little better. Okay. You have to finish, we have to figure this stretch out. This is something that's going to be bugging me for a while, because as we slowly move the, the storm front of the storm front of progress in this direction, it's going to get uh, harder and harder to, you know, it's, it's going to become more and more important to figure out what goes there, right? I think I'm going to grab this seasonal gravel. And I want to use this for the lot in front of this. And honestly, if I had like a big tent, I'd probably put that up as well. Like almost like a like a big top kind of tent, like a temporary structure. Look at tent. Okay. So let's let's try some other stuff on the side here. Just some textures that we've never really used before. Or this dark seasonal gravel, which can go there, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. There's a place up in... Not too far from the Downey Scenic, in uh, near Ellsworth, Maine, uh, that this is making me think of. That I stopped just to sort of check the place out, just to look if they had something. I can't remember what. Oh, it was... I wanted to know if they had a Razor Scooter. It was just like a little thrift shop, antique shop, uh, junk dealer sort of thing. Obviously, a Razor Scooter is not an antique, even if it feels like it. Um, but I wanted one, because I wanted to use it to get around near my office. Okay. So let's put some seasonal mud back here. That's fine. No, not a pawn shop. It was not a pawn shop. It was just like a junk place. Junk store. It was It was more like a... What do you call it? It was more like a... I don't know how to describe it. Uh, it, was, it was a flea market. Flea market is the word I'm looking for. I don't know why that... I don't know why I couldn't pick up the word flea market. But that's what I'm thinking of. It was basically a little flea market. Um... And that's what I'm thinking of for this place. I don't really know what I'm going to put in these areas, or even why they are the way that they are, or the colors that they are. This is honestly hideous, and I should not use it. Um, but part of me wants to put like a like a corn maze here, or like a hedge maze. That looks awful also. What even is some of this? How about this? No. I need one that looks right with the... Yeah, this is going to be like a hedge maze sort of thing, I think. Hedge maze with a chain link fence around the outside. Um, mine went to pawn shop. Best I can do is three bucks. Okay. I'll figure that out. This is this area is is testing my creativity. I feel um, between the the dirt track and the hedge maze, this is something that like this area is me doing things that I've never done and didn't really think that I would ever do. Yet here we are. I don't know if I want to keep this. Let me have another popper. Yeah, you gotta call the expert. You gotta bring in the expert on hedge mazes. And see if they, should, they can show me how to make one. I'm pretty sure the expert on hedge mazes is Marcel Voss. And he's gonna tell me that 
the most effective hedge maze is one that has nothing in it. Pretty sure that man has made more off of hedge mazes than anyone in the history of anything. Anyway. Uh, waiting for when Alice is like 60 years old and doing Zombitrain style videos, but explaining Tolbrind lore. Yeah. Hopefully I'll never get that deep in the weeds with Tolbrind. The zombie train episodic stuff was actually a lot of fun, but that's something that I don't foresee myself ever getting that deep in the weeds again. I don't think I can world build like that anymore, or at the very least, I don't have time for it. I was talking last night about how I have too many world building projects, or too many writing projects right now that, that have completely gotten away from me. And... You know, the zombie train is something that I think I'm going to leave well enough alone for the for the foreseeable future. I, I don't see myself ever going back and fiddling with zombie train stuff again. I That definitely run it, ran its course. I was happy with it then. Um, I am, like, happy with it now is not the right way to phrase it, but I am content to let it speak for itself. Um... It was a great, you know, it was a great deal of fun content at a time where, you know, I, I was still building my chops to make something unique. I mean, sorry about that. Um, the thing with the zombie train is that, you know, despite the fact that I started largely on, you know, largely with my own ideas in mind, I adapted it into the world of Max Brooks's The Zombie Survival Guide and later on World War Z. Um, and I think I, even in the original, I do reference Max Brooks's book, which was pretty much just a plug because I really liked it. And to be frank, I still really do. I think it's one of the better zombie books out, or the, the two of them together are one of the better zombie pieces of media that exist. And maybe they're the best, but I can't say for certain. I haven't seen most zombie media. I'm not honestly that big of a, uh a fan. Um, it's just one of those things where I think that... Oh, we, let's see. Hold on. What is this? This is grass and mud. I want, like, gravel and dirt and leaves. That's the one I'm looking for. Um, so, yeah. I, I definitely plugged the book because I thought it was really good. I thought it was really cool. I, you know, I uh, appreciated that sort of level-headed take on what zombies might be like, you know? Uh, and there are a couple of goofy things there. Definitely not uh, ones that I was biased into liking. Like, uh, Max Brooks is clearly an airship guy, and I couldn't be happier about that. Um, he talks about the decor a lot in... Uh, World War Z, which is the dirigible, the dirigible core, um, arm of the Navy or whatever. And he even, you know, in the zombie survival guide, he mentions like having an airship is probably like your best, uh, like mobile base sort of thing that you could ever hope to, you know, hope to have. Um, and like, Again, I think that's just fantastic. I love that to death. I am an airship guy through and through. Uh, I, if I could ride on the, you know, I, I, I would give my left nut to take a ride on the Goodyear blimp, right? Uh, any day now, airships are going to come back and it's going to make my whole life. Any day now. Any day now. But in seriousness, let me take a bite of this. Sorry. I'm very hungry. Um, I would be mowing down on that pizza if it weren't for... If it weren't for this. Um, but yeah. I've got too many, too many writing projects. Too many things up in the air. Too many things that... Um, 
that I don't know if and when I'm ever going to finish them. Or even start them, really, because two of my favorite ones I haven't even started on aside from outlines. And then there's a third one I came up with the other day. But that's what I mean. I just, I'm, I'm way too in the weeds with these things. I need to rewrite the Housatonic to get it into a state where it might someday be presented as a, um, where it someday might be presentable as like a, you know, something to pitch, right? Um, for those who don't know, the Housatonic is my interpretation of a retelling of uh, the Titchfield Thunderbolt, Americanized and set in the modern era. Where, you know, a railroad line is fighting for its life and they have to pull a steam engine out of out of a museum to, you know, save the day. Because that was my, maybe my only disappointment with the Titfield Thunderbolt when I learned about it. And eventually, you know, I did eventually watch it and was, you know, more than happy. I thought it was great. Um, but, oh, whoops, I typed in gate when I wanted a fence. I don't really like this fence, it's too big. Um, hold on. I don't want a wood fence, I want like a... Galvanized steel pipe, spiked, fancy metal fence. Um, fence builder's chain link. Yeah, hold on. Oh wow, that's a little intense. I don't want... I don't need one with the barbed wire on top. Um, oh shoot, Ryan's here? Hello, Ryan! Um, Alright, let's put that down, and we'll replace this with it. Let's jump into Surveyor 2 and make that happen. Um, yeah, so... I I really need to reread the Who's a Tonic story sometime. I over, only ever saw heard bits and pieces at coffee shops. Yeah, and I need to go through and I need to update it because there are some like inconsistencies that I originally um just place was selected asset. There's some inconsistencies that I had one thing in mind when I wrote the beginning part and then I had a different thing in mind when I wrote the ending part and I tried to tried to uh, sort of go back and make sure everything was copacetic but there are a couple of things like what specifically is Jack's relation to Thompson you know, not just that they were both in some kind of organized crime together but like Jack was betrothed to Thompson's daughter uh and that's why they've got, like, mega beef, right? Um, which is something that I don't think I ever really, like, explicitly spelled out in any part of the story. But that's what it's, you know, that's what it's alluding to. And I, I don't think I ever landed on that. And I might have contradicted myself here or there. But anyway, it, to answer Ryan's question, it's going great today. I uh, had a wacky day at work as one always does and can never get the hang of Thursdays and here I am making headway on my favorite trains project. Currently even I could go as far as to say my favorite mega project. This beats out the Who's a Tonic, it beats out Iron Horse and Chronicles, the motion picture, the novel, which is something that I am also working on and I just don't like I'm having trouble advancing it. I'm try I'm I'm having trouble making the time to properly advance that story. And that's uh, you know, that's something that I really would like to no, I don't want this to have a curb on it. Um something that I would like to spend time on. But, you know, overall, I'm doing pretty good. How about you, Ryan? How are you doing? I'm just going to go park the camera in front of Jesus over there in the corner of the hedge maze and say, like, how are you on this blessed day? Okay. So that can go to there. Um, 
I think getting sidewalk along this stretch on maybe on both sides is is the right play. Let's bring this to here. Because interesting family drama, you know, otherwise great including totality. Oh, were you in the Oh my god, Ryan, you finally wrote the five the paper on the Will, Willy Wonka experience. Oh god. If I had the time, I would almost I would I would consider reading that. Um, but uh, Orion, were you were you in the path of the totality? You asked about how was everything for folks in, and and uh, I didn't glean that you had seen it yourself. I would love to know what you thought of that. Um, I feel like it was a once in a lifetime experience, even though I absolutely want to do it again. But it's one of those things that. Uh, does not happen every day, and who knows what uh, what the world will be like, what my life will be like, when it comes time to uh, when it comes time for the next one around. I was at the location with ninety eight percent totality. Well, why didn't you just like move six feet to the left and go and see the the cool part of the eclipse? No, the the close to totality is definitely cool looking. The full totality was absolutely breathtaking in a way that I cannot describe. Uh, that I feel like my, my words would fail me. I keep saying it was 25 times cooler than I w expected it to be, and I expected it to be really cool. Um, oh, shoot, what am I doing? Literally everyone clapped at one specific point, not even the closest point to totality. Who are they clapping for? Thanks, Moon. It's even more pointless than clapping at the end of a movie. When you're the only one in the theater. Okay, let's move that to there. Let's move this to here. Clapping at the end of, the, of a drive-in movie. Or something like that. Um... That sounds a little wild, Ryan. Uh, I went with my family. I went to my family farm to see it without the hundred thousand people in town. Oh man, yeah. Um, I drove up to Vermont, like I said earlier, and the amount of traffic was absolutely unbelievable. Not even on the way there, because we left early. We left at six a.m. It's supposed to be a four-hour drive to the spot that I picked. And it was about a five-hour drive, which, all things considered, not completely insane. It tacked on an hour. We did make a rest stop. You know, not absurd. However, on the way back, it was like the world was ending. It was, to go back to zombie apocalypse for a second, that's almost what it felt like. It's just like, every highway is choked with cars. Um... Every gas station has, like, three times as many vehicles as it can fit. Uh, and there's just no end in sight. Like, usually, you know, when you're stuck in traffic, you think, like, okay, you know, this is this is rough, but we'll get by the accident or we'll get by the, the pinch point, And then we will, you know, then, then we'll just go from there. And it's like, okay, I'm seeing the traffic, and I'm seeing it go into the distance. And on the map, I'm looking, and it doesn't end. It just is cars forever and ever. And so I do not blame you for not going to town with the gajillion people because, oh my God, so many people. <laughs> um, just absolutely mind-boggling, the amount of people. Okay. Um, I really like the way this is coming together. I don't know how... To make a hedge maze. Uh, I'll have to grab some hedgerows and just start going to town. Um, this area needs to get filled in with either trees or what. So I might as well do that pretty soon. Oh, I even I even boxed off the edge here. Because uh, I wasn't planning on there being trees in this area. And honestly, okay. Okay, past me. I get it. I'll, I'll not put trees here. I, re I relent. Um, let's just grab the Ozgrass or maybe the Herba 3. 
Doesn't Disneyburg have a hedge maze? Disneyburg. That's a good. That's a good way to call it. Uh, honestly, I have no idea. Um, the Disneyburg adjacent attractions. I don't know. They might have like. A, I mean, it's a corn maze. Uh, corn maze kind of. Kind of neighborhood, right? Um, but the, these thing, yeah, the the Jesus thing is going to be the end of the maze. That's. You know, I stuck it in the corner, and then the idea just came to me. Almost like a virgin birth. Uh, almost like an angel. It spoke to me. And I wasn't listening because I was too terrified by all the arms and wings and eyes. Um, oh, Cherry Hill has the corn maze. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, corn. The maze maze. It's a maze maze. It's amazing. Um... Let's uh, push this over to here. I always feel so glad. All right, so so glad. I always feel so bad when I'm doing this. Like I'm sitting in here doing our construction, and I can just like, I can hear Gloria just sitting in the other room, periodically clearing their throat. Just I know that Gloria is just sitting on the couch, browsing their phone. Okay. They're watching Grey's Anatomy. Okay, never mind. I wasn't going to get attention from Gloria tonight anyway, then. Uh, anyway. Let's grab this. The Grey's Anatomy. I, I don't know what season Gloria is on, but uh, Maze Anatomy. Oh, they're on season 10, a voice from the Grey Beyond has, has told me. I don't know how many seasons there are. Um, the, the voice from the great beyond has gone silent. I'll never know how many seasons there are of Grey's Anatomy. So I won't know how long uh, until Gloria gets to, like, uh, until I get to uh, interact with Gloria again. There are two things that Gloria does, and it's uh, watch Grey's Anatomy and put my stuff in the recycler in Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> anyway I know you went through and cleared all the junk out of the wood chest I was going to use that yeah eventually <laughs> yeah so stop destroying stuff Hold on, can I have the little grass? <laughs> uh, I was I was gonna get around to using that stuff. I was, I swear. Um, okay. Oh, I wanted to put a little building back here. I forgot. I wanted to put like a little powerhouse or something. But I guess this will just be a rip track, or it'll be the we're pushing a bunch of stuff out of the back of the building and putting it somewhere track. This is, this is literally just a vestigial sighting of an idea that I had an hour ago and then immediately forgot about. Awesome. I'm doing a good job. I know I'm the best at making trains routes. Too bad I don't do, like, glamour shots or anything or, like, editing. I feel like uh, I could attract a much larger audience if people were, you know, a, a chill on that. Um, if, if I had a... a a viable amount of uh, production value. Uh, sadly, I do not, and I do not intend to change that. It's too much work. However, uh, feel free to tell your friends, relatives, uh, dogs, cats, um, anyone who would listen, people on the street, foamers at your model railroad club, that one's actually important. Um, people that you meet trackside, always carry your trading cards with you and challenge people to a d -d 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 duel. Um, always carry your trading cards and all of the score sheets and, uh, also importantly, a uh, folding table and chairs. Because it's not going to be a short amount of time that you're sitting there playing Loco Dome. Unless, of course, you just totally forget the rules and only play half the game. That, that, that always works. Um, hey, random per street person, I have this friend, right? Well, you don't even have to do that. Like, the, that makes the credibility go down, right? You gotta say, like, hey, have you heard of steam locomotive trading cards are you interested um 
<laughs> okay, um, let me cover that. I can see the line back there. Um, it wasn't half a game on purpose. I don't think I insinuated it was on purpose. Um, but, you know, the people were going to throw you out of the restaurant anyway if you didn't wrap it up. Uh, my ramen was getting cold. Now you know how Weibold felt. The famous my chicken is cold moment. Um, anyway. Let's do... Let's fill this area in. With some grass and some some shrubs. I don't know, I just feel like maybe you could have resolved these problems by not playing locomotive versus in the middle of a restaurant. Anyway. I I wanna make a meme of you know the 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 two people sitting at the table and the one person yells something embarrassing about the other person and is like, see, no one cares. I need to do that, but with Matt, and be like, this guy stole a brick. See, no one cares. Um, I thought the restaurant choice... Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, at least you, you've got the meme out of it. There's context for this somewhere, but it's in, it's in a Terminus podcast episode for the people that are like, what the hell are you talking about? But what I'm actually talking about is visit our website, thearnhorseman.com, and uh, buy... Steam Locomotive Trading Cards. Batch 4 coming out soon, TM. As soon as I get the balls to either use the photo from the dead guy and just assume no one's going to come after me, or just put out the cards in, like, an incomplete fashion, or, you know, find a way to contact Martin Hansen that's not through his legal email, because he didn't answer my email. And I'm going to assume that he's not going to. Um, or his, his professional email, I should say. Probably went to, like, his spam box or something. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the... I know I've said it, but I am excited for the next uh, batch of trading cards. Okay, so let's do this. Let's fill this in. I'm getting a phone call from Pennsylvania. I cannot answer that right now. No, it's not Casey. Um... Okay, let's do this. We have almost this whole area taken care of. I mean, the hedge maze is going to be its own its own issue. But we have almost this area all scenic in. And I really like the look of it. We're going to need to add a bunch of junk back here and around here and over here. But for the most part, I'm really liking this. Um, I also need to put invisible signals at the end of these stalls. And that sort of thing. But that's that's a future problem. Let's grab the let's grab the other one, the grass and mud for this area right here. You know how sometimes there are just areas like on a piece of property that are just like really soggy for no reason. That's what this that's what this is. I'm going to grab this grass, because I barely ever use this. Um, Matt, I'm sure you, we will find some things to trade. I mean, the thing is, P&E 4 is going to be a, what, a class 2? So it's going to be a little bit rare. I don't even have, I don't have many class 2s myself. I did finally get a legendary, because Mew traded with me for some batch 1 stuff. Um... And he had one of the DMIR engines, so now I have a DMIR engine. Which I need to go through and redo my... Um, I need to go through and redo my rosters for the higher-end uh, loco domes. Okay. Also, I know I have a standing challenge with Easton Loco Dome, and I honestly, I can't remember. I thought... Like, E suggested that it might be park weight, because we both made these outrageous lineups. Uh, he made Saved by the L, and I made Burke Buddies. And... I don't even think that was it. Because I remember feeling bad while I was making Burke Buddies, 
because it's like a shotgun to the face of someone with a less absurd lineup. Um, which, if I remember right, was Kaiserin. And I, I vaguely recall having this standing challenge with Kaiserin, and I made that for that, and I made a different roster for East. I think I made, like... Um, I think I made Explain Like I'm Ford for East. Hi, East. I, I think I think the, the roster that I made for you was Explain Like I'm Ford and not Burke Buddies. I mean, I made Burke Buddies sort of because of your thing, but I don't think our standing challenge was Parkweight. I think it was, I think it was Broadweight, or whatever that one is. Because I remember you had to go and make a, I know you had to go make a roster, and you had already had Saved by the L for a while before the idea of me trying to drum up some more local games with, with people. Just for just for fun, just so I got to play, right? Because I never get to play. Uh, I always get to host, and honestly, I find it a little bit more entertaining to host. But you know, that's just me. Um, I feel like part of me should reset the counter on the the challenges and everything. To see what I can do with that. Um, we should go right now with Matt hosting. Well, let's wait until after I eat dinner, anyway. TJ did a pretty good job of hosting, for what it's worth. Not that I'm going to drag him into this, because I know he would not be enthused. And he sounds like he's racing up there, anyway. But... When Mew and I did ours, um, he did a pretty damn good job of, of figuring it out, keeping it together. And that was, you know, sort of like you guys. It was on paper, um which presents its own problems because you don't have the spreadsheet there to help you out. Um, the spreadsheet does a lot. It, it was interesting seeing what the spreadsheet, you know, did not do. Or what, you know, what the troubles were without the spreadsheet, I should say. Okay, let's park some cars. Always a line of cars. Long line of cars, song by Cake. I should put more Cake music in the in the Iron Horseman radio. I did put in a song the other day. I've been listening to Iron Horseman radio a lot. I am so happy that it is as reliable as it is. Now, currently. It's going to go down in like a day or two for automatic updates, but... Uh, troubles without a spreadsheet counting to 20. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's hard, though. Um, paint them black. Okay. So this is, this is pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I feel like I should, oh yeah, right. I wanted to shrub this area up. I actually do want some shrubs as opposed to, I don't want no shrubs. Um, and then maybe put some trees in here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got this area done. I mean, if you don't look at this, this area is done. And this needs to be filled in with something I don't know what exactly. I didn't... I, I haven't picked what I was going to put in here. Um, some dude wanted him in black, and so paint him black. He must have a thing for black. I was... Uh, as one does... I started Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, the album, 41 minutes and 5 seconds before totality. You do that so that the moment the totality starts is the moment that Eclipse begins. And first of all, that was awesome and surreal, and I shout out Casey for informing me as to the correct way to time that. Uh, personally, I would have gone with shooting for specifically the last line of the album, which you know, not counting for the weird stuff at the very end, is the sun is eclipsed by the moon. Um, having that come up right at totality would have been, I think, the the icing on the cake. And I thought it was going to line up even because I forgot about a song. I forgot about any color you like. 
And so that was playing, and we're sort of waiting for the totality to go on. The train came by in the middle of us and them, if I remember right. Um, which Lafayette was not happy about the train. Lafayette had the worst birthday ever, and I feel really bad about it. Well, he was scared the crap out of. So that's why. Well, he probably wasn't going to run towards the big scary thing. He's not that stupid. <laughs> um, anyway, I put it on, absolutely surreal, um, and then I got to explain to Gloria the, the origination of any color you like, uh, which is something that I haven't been able to do in a very long time, and I think it's such a neat, you know, it's just one of those things, right? It doesn't really mean anything. It's just one of those things where you go, oh, wow, you know, I'd never... I'd never heard of that. That is really, you know, it's sort of a neat little history fact. Uh, some people would call that a factoid, but that's not what factoid means. A factoid is not true by definition. Uh, of course, nothing matters anymore because the language is fluid and literally means figuratively and, you know, whatever. Like, you can resist that if you want, but the dictionary now has that as a definition. So... It is what it is. Uh, I'm not really complaining about it, per se. I'm just sort of acknowledging how language changes. And how it'll change right up from under us, just in the way that the winds go. Right? Um, like, you know, the all of the, the 21st century Gen Z slang is slowly being added to the dictionary as it becomes more prevalent and more mainstream and less weird um like I, I believe a riz was added to the dictionary recently also they removed uh the thing about not ending a sentence with a preposition which is interesting um i'm taking my time <laughs> okay thanks east for partially reciting uh non-stop i believe that's not stop um, anyway, so I think this area is going to be, this is going to be trees. We don't have any parks. I'm usually a little bit overboard on the parks, because it's, oh, we don't know what goes there? Throw a park there, you know? But, uh, in this case, I'm not actually sure. What I probably want to do is I want to add some, well, no, because this, do I want to add some big old piles of coal out here? I'm not sure. Listen, I've, if you guys go ahead and sing the entirety of nonstop, it'll give the stream plenty of engagement. YouTube algorithm might favor it a little bit. Anyway. Uh, I'm missing a buffer over here. I'm starting to run out of steam. Part of it is because I need to eat dinner. If you're going to sass me, at least sass me from in here. <laughs> the, the audience. You guys, I'm sure, can't even hear Glory, and it's just no matter what I say, it's something. There's a response. The only Gen Z slang I use is yeet. Uh, <laughs> that's, I mean, it's a good one. It's useful. Um... I make it a point to use late 1800s and early 1900s slang because it sounds more intelligent. I'm not sure I agree with you, but, you know, if, if it makes you happy, it makes you happy. I mean, you can, you can lean into whatever slanguage you want. Just let it be you. Um... See, the thing is... It stops being slang when it reaches, you know, the the popular zeit, like, the popular con like, okay. It stops being slang when it becomes official, right? Um, and if you are using stuff that's, I mean, the thing is, you can have stuff that's fallen out of favor, too, right? Oh, is this the same texture? 
This is the same texture. Oh, huh, interesting. Um, is this the same texture? Yes. Okay, I need more dirts. I need more different dirts. I have this dirt. I like this dirt. Um, so, I'd love for someone to translate a Gen Z sentence entirely made of abbreviation and emojis to me. I mean, you can make a sentence with just one emoji, right? Like, no. Like, the word no is a complete sentence. I'm sure you can, if you can make a sentence with one word, you can make a sentence with one emoji. Um, because you can just use it as a reaction, right? Uh, like, I, I'm sure responding to someone's elaborate dissertation with the, the, like, nerd emoji, that's got to be, like, a complete emoji sentence, right? That's got to be the, it's the equivalent, it's a complete thought, right? It is saying this person is a nerd and I'm not listening to them. Like, like get your facts out of my narrative, sort of, right? Uh... That's a complete sentence. Um, but, you know, if you're... I mean, it, and that's the other thing. It's like abbreviations, right? I feel like abbreviations have not fallen out of favor, per se. But it's just not... It's not what it used to be, right? There was a golden age of texting. There was a golden age of abbreviations by text. Where you were doing it because... Because to get to the letter P, it took four button presses, or something like that. You know, I don't remember exactly, but you know what I mean. If you know, you know. Um, you are you are minimizing the number of letters that you have to type, because you're typing them on a 4 by 3 keyboard where every number is assigned to, you know, multiple letters. Um, and so, like, OMG... I know IDK my BFF Jill is, you know, it just takes a massive amount less time. And people joke about like, oh, what are you going to do with all that time you save uh, by doing these abbreviations? In that era, it did genuinely save time. Like now with, with keyboard swiping and, you know, just very responsive phone keyboards. You know, obviously they're all digital now because we had a very brief phase where you could get a full keyboard on a phone. Um... And you still can, I guess, if you have, like, a BlackBerry, right? They still, those still exist. Um, but, you know, it, it's, the keyboards are much faster and more responsive, and you've got voice to text. Um, you can, like, there's less of an excuse for being flagrant with grammar and spelling. Uh... I usually don't get up on people like that anymore in in text anyway. It just doesn't bother me. Like, yeah, if you're writing a if you're writing something public facing, if you're writing a paper or whatever, yeah, you better damn well have stuff right. If you're writing a a post that's going on your company's social media page, like you better damn well have everything spelled right. But and you better put that Oxford comma in, you son of a gun. Um, I I'm I'm a big fan of the Oxford comma. Uh, I'm glad that that isn't what got removed when they you know, the the preposition ending a sentence with a preposition thing. Um, there's there's like one exception to that with like doing social media stuff for a company, and it's probably Wendy's Twitter. Uh, like they can do whatever they want. I don't care. They can they can do whatever they want. They could be mean to me directly, and I would still love it. Um, translating the word LOL to laughing out loud to reach the word. oh god. Um, yeah, um, yeah, so anyway, let me grab this, get this spot under the bridge downtown, there. <laughs> Asterisk stands for S. I don't think that's what, that's what stands for means, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so we're getting this in, getting a little bit further along here. Um, me writing a 10,000 page, page? 10,000 page paper. Hey, how many pages are in the entire Lord of the Rings saga? <laughs> I've still got another popper.
Part of me really wants to mess around and run some trains in here. So you're writing 10, 10 Lord of the Rings sagas. Good luck. F is for friend who just... Uh, yeah, okay. Fire, uranium bombs, and no survivors. Okay. Let me... Maybe split this in half. And put two separate things in it. Because... I'd like to fill this in. I might end up popping off early because I'm hungry, right? Don't blame me. Oops. Uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. It's about three Bibles. Wait, how many pages is the Bible? Thanks. Hi, baby. Depending on Bible font size. Oh, this reminds me of a of a terrible joke uh, that I heard the other day, and Gloria already heard this, which so it's good that they went to the bathroom. Um, so the Pope feels unwell, and he goes to his medical advisors. They're not sure what's wrong with him, so they call all of the top doctors in Italy to come and examine him. Eventually, they come to a verdict, and. That verdict is, as they explain to Pope Francis, they say, you know, Your Holiness, I'm sorry, but you're dying. Um, you are, you know, your, your profession requires you to be celibate, and all of that, you know, is, is pent up, is backed up, and it's going to kill you if you don't do something about it, if you don't, you know, if you don't have sex with someone. Uh, and the Pope says, okay, I will have sex with a woman, you know, for, for the sake of my life and for the sake of the entire Christian faith. I will break my sacred vow, uh, you know, so that, uh, we don't have to go through that whole damn process of finding a new Pope again. And he says, I have three conditions. The first one is that this woman must be must be blind. She may not see me. She may not know that it is me. Um, the second is that she must be deaf and mute. She must not hear me, and she must not be able to recount this uh, to anyone when when it's over. And the third one, the third request, and the the doctors and the cardinals all look at him. You know, yes, Pope, anything you need. Uh, she's got to have huge tits. <laughs> Anyway, let's, I need to square this field up. Anyway, does anybody want to go bowling? Um, oh, shoot, I angled this the wrong way. It should be angled this way. Nope, this way. There we go. Walk over the first class section of the train to hell. Dean, don't worry about it. You'll find out when you're older. This, The way this tiles, I, I genuinely don't like. I might replace this with something else. Um, yeah, save that joke in the brain box. There are definitely better ways to tell it. I'm, I'm always appreciative of... Um, I was appreciative of the like uh, Norm Macdonald style jokes where they sort of where it's a shaggy dog story you know where it goes on and on and on and the conclusion is like nothing you know nothing special the one that I had on on West Virginia get uh, you know the one that was stuck in my my mind when we were in West Virginia a lot was the moth joke which I probably told but I can't tell it like Norm Macdonald tells it because I'm not patient enough for that um, because he tells it, and it's like three minutes long. Uh, the gist of the joke is, you know, it starts with a moth goes into a podiatrist's office. 
And, you know, when he tells that on, like, I think Conan's show, um, Conan stops him and is like, excuse me, a moth goes into a podiatrist's office? You know, yeah, a moth goes into a podiatrist's office, and he sits down and he says, Doc, Doc, you gotta help me. I, and then he, like, lays out all this stuff about his life, how he doesn't, you know, he doesn't, like, feel attached to his wife anymore, how he doesn't love his son, how he just feels cowardice and he keeps a cocked and loaded gun by his bed and maybe if he was stronger he would bring it, you know, himself to use it and, and finally end his miserable existence and it goes on and on and on and it just gets worse and worse and at the end he goes, uh, and the podiatrist says to him, well this is, you know, that's some heavy stuff, I'm sorry that you're suffering with all that, but you need a you need a psychiatrist. You don't need a podiatrist. Like, what are you in my office for? And the moth says, "Well, the light was on." <laughs> Which I have tortured too many people with that joke. Even if I don't sit down for like the whole three minutes to tell it. Oh yeah, the the cow trilogy is good. You know, cow with two legs, ground beef. Uh, you know, cow with no legs, ground beef. Cow with three legs, lean beef. Cow with uh, no leg, or car, cow with two legs. Your mom. Um, I got my own mother with that the other day. I couldn't help myself. Um, but yeah, the the podiatrist one um, is good. The cow jokes are good. Those are go tos for me. the The other one that I love is the is the elephant uh, the elephant ones and the brick joke the the brick joke is you know the three kids are throwing a brick as high as they can to see how strong they are based on how far it sticks in the mud the third one goes up it doesn't come back and then you just sort of ignore that and you go to a second joke about a woman with a parrot on an airplane parrot gets thrown out and uh you know takes the you know, parrot gets thrown out and the woman throws out the pilot cigar um and, you know, you sort of set it up so that you think that the, you know, you make your audience think that the parrot has the cigar because the parrot comes knocking on the windshield of the plane. Uh, and instead he has the brick from the previous joke. Like, very extremely classic brick joke, right? Uh, it's like the originator of the term brick joke. But some people still don't see it coming, and it's great. Uh, the other one is the elephant joke, which is... Um, you know, did you know that, uh, did you know that elephants can, did you know that elephants paint their balls red and hide in cherry trees? Uh, and someone says, no, that sounds ridiculous. Like, they don't do that. And, I, and the response is, well, you know, you know why you've never seen an elephant doing that? And usually the question is, no, why? And the answer is, because they're really good at it. <laughs> um, and then you ask... What's the loudest sound on the savannah? I, guess, I don't know what. A giraffe eating a cherry. And sometimes that one takes a second to land, and it's so good when it does. That's just a sampling of my favorite dumb jokes. And I feel like I'm going to be a great dad someday. Based on that alone. Okay, we got a new, we got a new color. We found a new brown, is what we just did. Uh, Springfield. That tiles really poorly. That tiles really poorly. Um, PBR Farm Field 19, that's actually not bad, that's the one I was going to do. It looks pretty good right now. Um, that looks awful. That looks bad. That, yeah, I've seen worse. Let's just rotate it like this. Oops. I just thought I just heard I just heard TJ absolutely wrench his his wheel. I don't know what's going on up there. Strawberries truly seasonal. Yeah, we'll just do another brown patch then. This is all brown, like damn. These are 3 relatively fallow looking fields. What about this? Eh, we'll do that. 
Okay, we don't have this around. Actually, is that this? Yes, okay. Um, what about some, like, grazing area? Um, I like the striped grass. That's actually a pretty good one. The Donner stuff I don't trust. I feel like that's given me problems before. This tiles poorly. Oh, it doesn't matter, because I can... Okay, no. What about this? That's extraordinarily bad. Um, smaller radius and maybe smaller and maybe larger scale. Yeah, okay, that's better. I might have to go through and, and must that up a little bit because... Sm does smaller scale look better? No, not unless I spend a lot of time with it. I don't really... I'm not happy with anything we have. I'm not happy with any of the offerings. Look at the way that's striped. Like, why would why would you make this texture? It doesn't look good. Like, that looks fine, because there's not a lot of variation. But, like this? That looks atrocious. Why would you do that? Like, you can, you can mess it up a little bit, in, like, a small area, but... What about this? No, I still don't like it. Still not a fan. We'll just use this then. Morgan Morgan? Morgan to Morgan, what do you call a cow with no legs? I can't think of any other of my go-tos. I told a couple of jokes to Gloria earlier that they were absolutely not interested in hearing. Because uh, they were just terrible. But... Um... Shoot, I can't, I can't remember what it was. What, Lafayette? What? What can I do for you, pup? He's just in the room. He's grumbling at me. He's very upset for some reason. Okay. Let's do this. Then I need to figure out my, my trip next month. I'm inviting, uh... Inviting Pennsylvanians to come and have lunch at the Reading Terminal with me and my dad. <laughs> Just a random, random thought. Uh, Laffy needs love. He does need love. Lafayette, come here. Oh, no, he doesn't want me. He doesn't want me. He's sitting at the bottom of the stairs staring up at TJ. TJ. TJ's got his headphones on. He can't hear me. Anyway. Leffy needs love. Is true. Again, he had an absolutely terrible birthday. I feel very bad for him. Um, if it's next month, I can go along. Yeah, it's going to be the weekend after Mother's Day. Which, by the way, Mother's Day is the weekend of the 11th. Reminder to everyone that was going to forget. Um, mark that down in your calendars. It's already marked on your calendars, but don't forget anyway. Um, this is the color of the grass in the South Park, by the way. This is what grass looks like in Como. Uh, it's just like as far as the eye can see, this color. It's so vibrant. Uh, it's so incredible. Um, anyway. I can't wait to go to Colorado <laughs> as well. I'm so glad we're getting that squared away. I'm glad Taki was able to hop back on. I know we're losing Vert on that trip, but he's going to be, you know, it's not like he's missing the trip. He's just going at a different time. Uh, and I'm not bitter at all. Um, I received the save the date for Weibold's wedding the other day. Um, so I've got to plan two Colorado trips. Maybe if I can't get together with the three quarters of one idiot um, for the... Uh, for the horseman trip, maybe I'll be able to do it in the other one. Because there are a couple of... There are definitely more stories that I can tell. I know that the second part of stories that I got to tell, the second citation needed, um, is going to come out very shortly, if it's not out already. 
And, oh man, I'm so excited about that. I know, like, the memes that people sent me about the barge bridge, or sorry, about the, uh, the, the bridge killing bridge, about Turner's Falls, absolutely outstanding. Like, I'm so happy that they made that much of a, that that story made that much of a splash with some people. It's a real slow burn at the beginning, but it really picks up at the end. Um, this next one is more of a traditional citation needed story where it's, it's just sort of a meandering story the whole way through. It doesn't really have much of a punchline. Um, but it's, you know, it, it definitely got some laughs out of people and I hope people enjoy it as much as they enjoyed the Turner's Falls story. Um, anyway. Uh, I gotta put grass down the middle of here and grass down the sides of the road. Um, and then we're done. I'm just not sure if I have it in me because I'm starving. Okay. Let's, let's just go through this as quickly as I can. Doing the side of the road grass, and I'm going to have to do fences for this too. Ugh, I forgot about that. Because this is grazing land, it's not farmland. Um, so I've got to, you know, you got to keep the cows in. Um, and then this, and then this. There we go. I'm concentrating on following the train. I missed the, the first GTA jokes, but I'm glad I noticed that one. Okay. Honestly, after this, I might go figure... I might go book stuff for Philly. I might uh, instead play more Buckshot Roulette. <laughs> if anybody wants to uh, hop onto Discord. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, I, I don't think I'm going to stream that publicly, actually. But for, for the folks that... Uh, for the folks that can see, I will put in your name and we'll see how much money you don't make. Because I kept forgetting, like, it's so easy to forget. It's so easy to underestimate how easy it is to keep track of how many shells you have. Especially when you're an absolute novice at Buckshot. Uh, oh man. There was other stuff that I wanted to talk about on stream, but I don't even, like, I don't have the, you know... I, I want to send the wagon to Tony before I go to Maine in, like, a week and a half. Um, less, less than a week and a half, like a week and change. Not because there's anything wrong with it, in fact, just the opposite, because she performed admirably all the way through Vermont, and I feel like she needs a break. She needs an oil change, tune-up, um, and just a once-over... And a couple of little fiddly things that have been broken for a while. Uh, fix the back windshield sprayer. Fix the, uh, maybe, maybe even, maybe even replace the ignition switch so that I can actually start it with the key again. That's an idea. That's a thought that I had. Uh, but that's going to take getting parts in. I don't want to be spending money here, especially because I still do have things that I have to pay for for the Colorado trip. Um, <laughs> I know getting out of the car to start the car is such a, it, it's an iconic part of the wagon experience right now, but boy, do I not love standing out in the rain, in the dark, trying to figure out where the wire is with nobody else to hold a flashlight. Um, hi baby. What's up? Love you. That was Grey's Anatomy. Oh, that's weird. You're closer to the Wi-Fi over there. Oh, it just doesn't like thing. Um, I was at Hooters and the barista was talking about her friends who's bad with cars and the stuff she told me blew me away. Oh no. Oh my God. Yeah. No. It's. It's. You know. I, I'm at I'm in a place in the Dun and Kruger graph with cars where I know that like I have ideas, like I'm at the bottom of the first curve, right? Um, where it's like I still feel like I know stuff that I don't know, but 
I don't know. I, I know that I don't know everything, and that's why I have a Tony. Um, but there are people that are still way behind me, and they're just very confident about their autom automotive know-how, and they do not. They do not know what that is. Um, hi, baby. Really? Drink my water? What is it dirty with? How did you dirty the cup you only put water in? The straw is dirty. Well, then clean it with a straw cleaner and go about your day. Ooh, not changing a oil in two years is rough. Um, let's let's go back to fence. I'm I keep thinking about it. You're watching Grays. I'm not even watching Grays now. Yeah. I'm gonna use the worm. I'm gonna use the worm fence. I like the worm fence. Bless you, Thank pup. You. Yeah. Oh, is that what he was freaking out about? He was also freaking out about a rabbit that he saw across the street in the yard. Oh, okay, so the cat and the rabbit. Hi. Hi. I heard you. I heard you like telling him to chill, and I couldn't. I didn't know why. Um. Er is infinitely better. I have. I haven't seen er. Have you seen er? House. I don't know. I don't know where house lands. I don't know. The the medical shows, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about most medical shows, honestly. Like, I know people watch them for the drama, right? And I'm not really here for that. I'm not super interested in that. I want to know the weird medical conditions. Like, I feel like that's a house thing, right? House is always about, like, here's this obscure answer to the, to the question, like, She's fermenting in her gut, and that's why she's drunk all the time, or something like that. Uh, one episode in House where a girl was having like an allergic reaction, mm -hmm. and her boyfriend thought that it was because he um, was taking antibiotics when she was allergic to penicillin. Okay. But it turned out she had taken her in her vagina. Oh God! Okay, nice. <laughs> um, because they had sex in the field. Yeah, don't this. There was, um, I saw a post, um, I, I saw a meme that was like, uh, me being, you know, I love being naked out in, out in nature. It makes me feel closer to nature or whatever. And it's just like a picture of this, this woman, you know, with nothing on standing in a field. And then the second panel of like, it's effectively a little comic. The second panel is a picture of a tick typing on a keyboard. Like, a tick wrote this. The tick wants you to go out there. Um, anyway. Oh, shoot, I connected it. I didn't really want to do that. Here, being at Mickelson Port is better than being at Penal Station near Seoul. Uh, ER is able to show you a character that's never been seen before. After a few minutes, you can really empathize with them. I mean... I feel like plenty of good shows can do that. Um, and I mean, that's really the point of a lot of these hospital dramas. You're supposed to empathize with the patients. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of them are just very much drama. Drama-centric. I mean, everybody, everybody loves some tea, right? See, he was trying to get attention from TJ, and he couldn't, so. I'm not looking at him. I'm not looking at him. I'm not giving him, an, I'm not giving him the attention that he wants. I'm not giving him the attention that he wants. Oh, he's a good boy. Okay. Um. <laughs> Helps that the theme is good. I mean, yeah, a good theme song will make a show, right? Like, I don't really watch SVU anymore, but that theme song, pretty good. Pretty damn good. Um, I can hear, like, an, I can hear it as I'm thinking. Okay. We got the fences up, we got the fields done, we got the grass in place. I'm hungry. 
we've reached what I feel like is a good stopping point because we got this whole area done and we even have like a big back shop that like that doesn't do anything and isn't really realistic to be there, but it's there. Um, and with that in mind, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next week. This is the Admiral.